how much, how many snaps for you in the preseason do you feel like you need at this point in your career to be ready to come up with day? How many do I need? However many the coach feel like I need, honestly. Um, personally, I'm ready for the season already. Um, you know, I think for me, you know, getting a really good grasp of the defense, uh, then it's about really getting in shape. But for me, you know, I, I try to get my – every single day I come out of practice, every rep, I try to make sure I'm getting in shape, running to the ball, doing all the little things. So, for me, um, I'll be ready to play a game tomorrow, honestly. But uh, however many reps the coach – you know, Coach Matt feel like I need to get in the, in the game in the preseason. You know, that's how many I need. Matt was just t kind of saying the same thing, that he's, it's, he's ready to go now. At what point in an NFL player's career does it get like that, where it's like, let's just let's skip all this stuff and get to the game? Yeah, I, I don't know at what point, because I think for every player it's a little bit different. I would just say for me, speaking for myself, probably I would say maybe after a year, three or four, you know what I mean? Because obviously I feel like when you're a rookie, you really want to be able to go out there and kind of get those ramp up games and things like that. Second year, I kind of felt a little bit of the same. But at that point, it's like, you know, I start to play 1,000 snaps a year and things like that. It's like, okay, I know what it feels like to be in the game. I've been in almost every situation there is to be in. So, you know, like I said, you get to a veteran player, you understand it's really all about learning the defense. Once you feel like you communicate and learn the defense, like I know how to tackle. You know what I'm saying? I know how to cover. I know how to do all those things. So uh, let's go ahead and play a game. And I'm not necessarily saying that preseason reps aren't valuable because they are. Anytime you can touch the grass is valuable. So, um, but like I said, I feel like every team is different. Every coach is different. And every player is different. So it's all based on, you know, every individual situation. Where are you guys at with your communication on the back end? I think we're pretty good. Uh, it's still a work in progress. Uh, I don't think uh, we're not there yet. Um, but I think... You know, every secondary was saying the same thing. Um, like I said, it takes until you get into, into those games. You know what I'm saying? Right? If it's preseason or in-season games, there's always going to be things every single game that you have to fix, that you have to continue to work on. That's why in training camp we have walkthroughs every night because we kind of go over the practice of the day, go over some players that kind of gave us some trouble because uh, we're going to see different things every week against every team because every office coordinator is going to have some different wrinkles and things like that. So, But I feel like as far as the communication and the, and the, the meetings that we're having are really good. And uh, I think that's always a good precursor of how the season's going to go as far as how we're meshing together. You mentioned other play players, other teammates you've had that you get, in, you know, that you felt good about. Somebody, like, yeah, but this this group that you're with, a bunch of young guys, really ambitious. Uh, is there anything? Is it just? Is it? Is there anything different about them? Anything that strikes you about them as a, as a, the guys around you that you know lead to the optimism about the Stevens being special? Yeah, I mean, I would say that for the younger guys, like you spoke of, um, Brother Fish, Tyreek. Brisker and Kyler, um, it's more of a unique situation because all these guys are young, but they've all played a lot. Um, a lot of times you go into a lot of situations, you have a couple of veterans, and you usually have maybe one or two young guys who haven't really played a lot. For these guys, they have a lot of confidence because they have a whole year under their belt, two years, three years. Uh, then obviously Jalen was obviously a Pro Bowl guy. So I think that's the biggest thing. So it's more about just the youth and the energy that they bring uh, every single day in practice and uh, even in meetings. So. Uh, I don't really even look at them as young guys anymore. You know what I'm saying? They're actually veterans. But like you said, they're young. They don't have a ton of uh, miles on their legs, I will say. You have to play with confidence, as you know. I mean, it's not unusual. But these guys are so ambitious about being all pro, about being the best. I mean, I don't know. Is that, uh, uh, what do you think about, about, that, about that just as a personality? It just seems like this secondary has a personality. Yeah, I would think that if you didn't have those aspirations – um, you know, what are we, what are you really playing for? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, uh, the team goals is always to win a Super Bowl, right? But let's be real, every player has their own personal goals, right? If it's stats that you want to put up, but if it's, you know, being going, getting to your first Pro Bowl, uh, getting your first All-Pro, um, that's what you work in the summertime and the spring to try to, uh, you know, when you're doing drills by yourself, that's what you're trying to get to. So uh, I think that if they didn't have those aspirations, then there will have to be a real conversation I would have with those guys. Like, hey, don't you see that in yourself? You know, like you said, the guy like uh, Jaquan, um, I know he wants to be great. And uh, I think you have to see it first to be able to accomplish it. So, um, and rather if you, you know, they always say shoot for the moon and, you know, you'll land amongst the stars. So you have to set your goals really, really high. And not necessarily saying they can't achieve them, because I think every guy in this room has the ability uh, to be a pro bowl and be all pro. But you have to set those goals high before you can go and accomplish them. I saw you mention uh, on Twitter the other day, uh, there was a Caleb throw. Mm -hmm coming across at the end. And right. I was wondering actually when that play happened, 
if you would have made the play in the game? Because it seemed like it was bang, bang. No, 100%. It was, um, I think it was during a two-minute drill. We was in a high red zone. Um, you know, they caught us in cover two. And he threw a really good hole shot. It was like a four-vert play. Um, it was a bang, bang play. And like I said, and that's when I tweet, I said it was a hell of a throw. Um, because he actually inside released, but he got back out to like the red line. And, um, you know, I don't want to get into like the scheme and how we were supposed to play it and things like that. But if I were going to be able to make that play, it would have had to be a bang, bang play. Because I would tell you now, the way he threw the ball and, you know, kind of how it went, I wouldn't be able to pick it off. You know what I mean? It would have to be me take a good angle and just try to knock the guy out versus me try to go to interception. And during the practice, I really was trying to stick my hand out there because obviously I'm running towards the guy. And I didn't want it to be a full speed collision. So I just tried to throw my hands out there. Hopefully I can knock the ball down. And that's kind of how it went. Um, you know, obviously you got a lot of Twitter defensive coordinators and stuff like that kind of saying what would, what would have happened or whatever. Um, but for me, that's why sometimes when you post practice highlights, not necessarily of the team, but it's just anybody, you post practice highlights, you don't really get a full context of what happened. Like it's not like you got like the all 22 film so you can kind of see exactly, you know, what the release was, what the corner was doing and all those things. Um, but yeah, it would have had to be a bang bang play if I'd have made a play on the on the ball. I was curious about that being a, a defensive player at some of these practices where you got the fans and the attendance. They want to see offense. They want to see these touchdowns. 100%. Yeah, you can't quite go full one hundred percent on some of those plays. What's, and what, what's that like when maybe there's a play that happens that the fans go crazy, but you're actually like, ah, I think the defense might have had that one. Yeah, I mean, you know, offense sells tickets. You know what I mean? Like, that's what most of these fans want to come out here and see. You know, they want to see Caleb. They want to see Rome, Keenan, DJ. They want to see those big plays. For me, as a player who's been in these leagues for a while, you have to know how to practice. You know what I mean? Like, every single one of those guys we need. So, it was a situation today where Keenan went a real wild, uh, like a double move on me, and I was running towards the ball, and I looked up, and I seen the ball. But as Keenan was falling towards the sideline, like, I could have easily reached up or try to punch the ball through him, but – in my eyes, I would have had to really go through him, and we were, didn't even have no pads on. I probably would have fell on him. He might have hit his shoulder. I don't know if you guys seen Keenan out of shoulder pads, but he has, like, these AC joints that are sticking up or whatever. And I don't want to fall on his shoulder or nothing like that, but it's so certain players, certain plays in practice where I feel like as a veteran, you have to know how to practice. You, know how, you have to know how to protect your teammates because we're going to need Keenan to have a big year. Um, so in certain situations, there are times to go up and make a play on the ball. And in certain situations, it's time to, hey, this guy, he's working on his stuff. He made a catch. The crowd went crazy. But in the game, uh, we would have both – If even if he had made the catch, we definitely would have both fell to the ground. I've been trying to fight for the ball and get the ball out. So it's just certain situations in practice, like you said, you have to know how to practice. Real athletes never touch the ground in practice. That's always my deal. Is that the touchdown that he caught? He yeah, on, on the sideline. Right, yeah. It was on the sideline, exactly. Like I said, it was, it was like right on the front pylon. Like I said, I had, I was, we was kind of in phase together. But like I said, just in certain situations – uh, where it can be a situation where we both can fall and hit the ground. Like, I'm not about to just try to, you know, we've both been in the league for a while. We're both going to need to be out here and, and play games. So we'll save those for live action reps for sure. Is that how you can build your whole career with offensive Some of the decisions like that where you, where you try to be smart about it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's those decisions. It's, it's a little bit of God blessing me. Uh, it's a little bit of how I take care of my body. It's a lot of different factors that go into that. But like I said, just speaking in that situation, um, like I said, for me, it's just knowing how to practice. Like I said, I don't – in practice, especially when you have shorts on, shouldn't nobody really be touching the ground. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of situations like if the offense fumbles the ball, it shouldn't be the offensive guy diving at the ground. Like, let the defense have it. Let them scoop. Let them work on, you know, taking it to the house. There's just certain ways that we should practice as, as teammates because I know we're going out here competing. We're trying to get better. We're trying to, you know – we're obviously, we're competing against each other. But it, it becomes a point where – Sometimes where the all you should let the offense have it, and sometimes you should let the defense have it. Does that ever lead to some back and forth with the coaches, where you know they might say, "Hey, why didn't you make this play?" Where you're just like, oh, "I'm just trying to protect my teammate." Yeah, I mean, like, and I also in that situation, I think it is a little different for everybody because I would think you know sometimes for a young guy that's fighting for a roster spot, he's probably going to do whatever he has to do to make that play. Uh, like I said, that's just speaking for my, just for me personally. Um, I know I can make those plays, and I know that sometimes as far, especially for the offense, especially he's a guy that, you know, we're going to need as a thousand yard receiver. I mean, he's, he's going to be a big part of our offense. Sometimes certain things aren't really worth it. And just in my opinion. Yeah, one more. From your perspective, I know you're not in the huddle or anything, but how is the offense coming along? I think, I mean, Caleb has made crazy strides since spring up until now. Just been watching him, watching him in the huddle, you know, watching the operation, watching how he's getting the offense in and out the huddle. Rather if it's hurry up, two minute, 
first down, you know, first and second down, third down. I think he's making tremendous strides. Um, I think if he came up here and told you, he'll probably still say they're a work in progress. Honestly, I think the defense is still a work in progress. I think all 32 teams are in a work in progress. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's very excited to get out there, but if it's the preseason, how many, how, how many reps he's going to play in the preseason or whatever he gets to the first game, I know he's going to be excited to go out there and try to put the work that he's put in from the spring up until now, you know, into a game. So, I, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch him for sure. So, uh, but like I said, he's making uh, some really great improvements. But, you know, as the overall as the offense, man, you see uh, every single day we're kind of going back and forth. Kind of early in training camp, defense is kind of winning a lot of those days. Uh, but that's usually normal. Normally the defense is ahead of the offense, especially when you got a new new offense, new quarterback. Um, so I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. Were you surprised by the way they kick off? Not necessarily a surprise. Um, when you're trying out something new, it's always, you know, got to iron out the wrinkles and everything. But uh, I do think it's going to be really good for a special teams unit in the long run. I think you'll get a lot of big returns, uh, especially earlier in the season while people, teams still trying to, you know, figure out the rules and everything like that. Uh, but first time out there, I mean, I guess you kind of got what you expected. Did you know that a punter could go hold the – yeah, then they got to, they got to run right right off or something like that. Yeah, I mean that's it's kind of crazy. I didn't know that until the game actually. But yeah. what was your biggest takeaway of the play as you're watching it? Uh, honestly, for just from a return standpoint, um, the kicking unit is all on one level. So it's kind of like if you get past the first line, it's just a kicker left, you know, which I, I love, of course, you know. Uh, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's also like, it's a tough block for the return team because you got to hold that block longer than the old style, which is tougher, obviously. Um, but as a return, I think it's a way to, uh, you can kind of manipulate the coverage a little more uh, to make a cut and, you know, try to make a play. How eager are you to try it out? Very excited. <laughs> Very excited. And you... On TV before. Just I, just a couple. I got a couple of friends that played in like the XFL and stuff, and so you know, just watching that. And so I've seen it before, and obviously studying it, you know, getting ready for our season and stuff like that. So yeah, I've I've seen it. Reach out to them, or was it just watching them? Just watching, and then we got like all the film and stuff from all the XFL games. So I've been breaking that stuff down. Yeah. What have you liked about your uh, receiver reps so far? Uh, I mean, I think we all just you know, I mean, for me, just getting in a new offense, just learning terminology, learning, you know, the timing of everything. Uh, just take, taking taking advantage of the ones that I do get, trying to make a play when the ball comes to me. How would you describe catching a Tory Taylor punt? Tory Taylor punts. Uh, he's got a little bit of a different uh, spin on it than a normal righty, I would say. Uh, a lot of hang time, a really lot, a lot of hang time. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's, look, other than the spin, it's just, I mean, get to the spot and catch the ball. But he's he's going to be really good, really, really good. What does that spin do to you? Uh, so really all it is is, like, as a returner, what a normal righty, when the ball turns over, it's going to fall to my left. Santori has a ball where it looks like it's turning over, but then it's almost like it dies and comes back to spins to the right. Um, so you kind of got to keep your feet moving as – once you see it a couple of times, like you, you kind of know it's coming. But uh, if you haven't, it kind of gets you a guy because you're moving to the left and you got to move to the right at the last minute. So, yeah. Yeah, Giorgio, you were with uh, Coach Beatty in LA. Yeah. What's uh, what's his kind of impact been on your career? What's it been like to be back with him? Uh, it's been great. Been great being back with Coach Beatty. That's my guy. Um, probably one of the reasons why I'm back here again now. Um, I had my best year in my career uh, in LA with. You know, with Coach Beatty as my receiver coach, um, I think just over the years, I mean, through that year, just we we kept in contact last year. Um, I think we've built a level of trust within each other. Um, he knows that I'm gonna be on top of my stuff. He knows that, you know, primarily primarily my role has been throughout my career. You know, if something happens on game day, somebody goes down or whatever it is, um, I've kind of been that guy to kind of step in and fill in all the spots. Um, and he knows that I can do that, and I can do that well. I did that for him in L.A. Um, and so I think it's kind of just he's built that – we've built that level of trust with each other. And obviously, like, a familiar face is always uh, welcome in when you're coming into a new organization. So uh, me, me and Betty, yeah, we got we got a really good relationship. That's my guy. Coach, 
Is learning and installing this offense any different than any other offense you've learned and installed? Is it just the same, or is there any way to tell if you guys are getting it or not? I mean, is this pretty standard, or is there any indication that show you that this? It's it's pretty it's pretty standard. I mean, for me, I've been played in a number of offenses in my in my career, so I, I wouldn't say it's been more difficult than any other one to learn. Um, I think that for us is just. Um, it's always a learning curve when you got, you know, when it's something new and then you throw trying to read the defense into it and all the things like that. So it's it's a little learn little bit of a learning curve. Um I don't think it's been any any tougher than any other place that I've been. It's just uh we gotta get down, hone in on the details. I mean, we're on week two of camp, you know what I mean? You're gonna have, you know, bad days or, you know, things like that. We're not supposed to be perfect on now. If we have to be ready for the Super Bowl this week, you know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not how it goes. Uh, that's what camp is for: to iron out the wrinkles and get on the same page and figure out who can do what and and the details and how you know Shane wants things run. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. What do you like about playing with Caleb so far? Uh, kid's special. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Having a guy that you know can get you the ball regardless of what spot that you're in or um, kind of like where he is. You know, he's got all the arm angles, things like that. But knowing knowing you got a guy that can get you the ball uh, when the ball is supposed to be there definitely eases, makes it easier for you as a receiver. Um, and then just being able to see all the different throws that he's been able to make, arm angles and things like that is, is very special. Uh, one, the, the, what I've been most impressed about him, though, for sure, is just how how engaged in wanting to get better he's been. You know, speaking on learning a new offense, like for a kid coming from college where it's mostly hand signals and, you know, you're on the ball a lot, having to get in the huddle and call to play, how fast he's come along and been able to pick that thing, pick that up um, and translate it to on the field, like just like any – quarterback, you're going to have ups and downs with it, but how fast and how engaged he's been and wanting to get better has been very, uh, very exciting to see. Like once once he gets full control of the offense and uh, gets comfortable in it, you know, I always say he's going to be one of them ones for sure. Yeah. Thanks, Yeah. All righty. Well, what's been your evaluation and how well the offense has gelled or built their chemistry so far? Um, I, I think it's been good. Um, I mean, we've had some off days here and there, but, um, you know, I think I've actually been pleasantly surprised in how we started off camp. Um, you know, I thought Caleb came in ready to go in terms of operating the whole thing from the huddle to the cadence. Um, we've had some hiccups along the way, but um, I think we've been able to adjust, and uh, I think things have been going good so far, and I think we're trending in the right direction. Cole, what are some of the things you look at in a practice? Like, if we don't see touchdowns necessarily, what yeah. are some of the things that you look at that tell you we're, we're making progress? Well, I, I, execution is number one. Um, guys going to the right spots, lining up in the right areas, uh, you know, breaking the huddle correctly. Um, so all those things are really important, and you know, that's kind of what we're, we're looking at right now operationally. And um, you know, I think we've had some hiccups here the past couple of weeks with that. But um, I think you know, when you get to post snap stuff, uh, Caleb has been pretty special, and you you see why you know he's the number one overall pick when when he's been able to make some of these throws that he's making. So. Um, yeah, we just got to continue to hone in on this operation and making sure that, you know, we, we get our cadences right and um, all the snap counts and line it up correctly and, you know, all those things. So, um, yeah, if we just get to that point, get to the post-snap stuff, I think we'll be pretty good. Caleb, as you're standing on the sidelines during the Hall of Fame game, watching Griffin and Sweeney kind of tear it up in the middle of the field, is there any yeah. part of you that goes like, I can see myself doing this? Something yeah. Like yeah, I mean, uh, you also got, like, they're, it's very vanilla. Uh, you know, we're, you're going against a team that we're playing in, I think, week two. So, uh they're probably playing their base stuff. We're running our base stuff. So, um, but it was cool to see all those guys do really well. And, um, you know, Brett obviously had a great night and in terms of executing the offense and doing all those things. And, you know, that's good for everybody to see when, when things like that are clicking. And, you know, when you get in those preseason games, you just want to make sure that you're operating well. And um, I think that was the case the other night. How much time do you need in the preseason to feel like you're ready for the regular season? I think at this point, I feel like I'm ready now. <laughs> but um, I also understand. You know, you get new teammate, teammates in and out, and it's important to kind of go through the game day operation with those guys and, um, you know, kind of get the flow and the rhythm with them. So, obviously, with a rookie quarterback, uh, that'll be important for us to do. And um, whether that's, you know, new guys up front with the offensive line, making sure you get 
calls across the line, uh, that's very big. And, you know, you can't really replicate in that. It's very hard to replicate in practice. So getting game time and game reps with that will be important. So, um, but in terms of like game shape and all those things, I think uh, kind of at a point where I feel like uh, I know how to get ready for a game and, and, and get in shape for a game. And um, so on that end, I feel pretty good about it. Cole, is there anything from being in Can Canton, growing up a Bears fan, that stood out to you the last few days that just was special while you were there? Yeah, I mean, it was cool just to go see the Hall of Fame when we caught in there. Um, you know, seeing uh, the Steve McMichael stuff was really cool for me. Um, that was my dad's favorite player growing up. So uh, it was cool to, to kind of see all that go down and, and see his jersey in the hall and, and then be able to see all the different busts up there was really cool. So um, definitely a cool moment. Obviously, a lot of history that, 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 that resides there. And, um, you know, obviously not, not fun reporting early to camp, but uh, it, it was cool to kind of experience that whole Hall of Fame experience. That was, it was fun. You talked about how, you know, you feel like you're already ready for preseason, how you feel like you're already ready for the season already in shape. How different is this from your first year in the NFL when you're a rookie, you're not used to the hustle and bustle of how it goes? Yeah, you're probably not really ready till year two. So <laughs> it takes the full year, um, at least for at least for, for me, I thought it did. So and I, for most rookies, I think it does. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that first year you're really swimming and it's, it's hard to kind of get things going and um, you know, it makes it easier when you got guys to rely on and lean on. And, you know, I had a guy like Jimmy, as I've mentioned before, countless of times, and I was kind of able to lean on him throughout my rookie season. And he was able to keep me grounded and keep, you know, guiding me uh, along the way and make things a little bit easier. But, um, you know, that first year is tough. You know, it's a long, long year. You go from, uh, from the end of your season right into combine prep, into draft stuff, right into the building, and then right into camp. Uh, it's, 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 it's a lot of stuff coming at you at once. And, um, you just got to kind of learn how to deal with it th throughout the way. Do you feel like you became sort of how Jimmy was to use the younger players? Uh, I try to be, yeah, for sure. I mean, we still got a little bit of an older group, uh, but, you know, I try with the you know guys we got, whether it's, uh, you know, now we got Brennan Bates and, um, you know, trying as best as I can to help those guys out and, and help them through it. And, you know, it's a big jump going from college to pro. So, um, you know, mentally, mentally and physically. So just trying to help them got, got through that and especially during this time of year. You still have somebody in the room who's a good one. Years yeah, I think he's like 40. It was funny. He was just telling me the other day how old he was. Yeah. Can you, what have you learned from your time with him? Oh, man. Um, just, I mean, perspective on, on life, uh, how to handle yourself outside of football. I think that's been really cool to learn uh, just how he gets away from the game in the offseason. And it, you know, helps him become so motivated during the season. And um, I think learning things in the run game that I've never learned before from a tight end has been really cool. And, um, you know, obviously all the experiences he had, you know, it's funny, we were, we were talking the other day, my question was how different, you know, what's, what's changed the most about the NFL from, uh, from when he first got into now. And, uh, he's like, well, I had to block guys like that. And he's pointing to Julius Peppers on the sideline. <laughs> he goes, those guys don't run around too often. No, it's just the, the different body types that he's had to go against throughout his career from, you know, from year one to now and how the game has changed so vastly really from a, you know, a big ground and pound to now all air raid type of stuff. Um, so it, it's, it's cool to get his perspective on the game and how it's changed over the years. Wearing a Julius Peppers jersey? I was, I was, I walked in with that one. Yeah. Yeah. What led to you like making that decision to, to rep him? Uh, I have to be honest, it was handed to me. So I, I didn't <laughs> get to make the decision. I would have probably done the McMichael if I had to choose. No, nothing against Peppers, but um, <laughs> no, that one was given to me. I was still still honored to rep it, though. That was cool. What does your uh, dad say in terms of why McMichael was his favorite player? Yeah, he likes, he likes – when he talks about McMichael, it's always about um, – you know, he wasn't the – I guess Hampton was the good-looking guy and the sacks, and obviously Richard Dent had all the all the sack him and him and Hampton. But uh, McMichael was just kind of the lunch pail guy in the middle, grinder um, that brought a ton of attitude, and you know he always was drawn to that. So that was uh, that, that was pretty cool to hear. Was he a wrestling fan? He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up a little bit of a wrestling fan as well, yeah. So I think that my dad wrestled also in in, uh, in high school, so um, yeah, I'm sure that played into it as well. Well, you and I think DJ were pretty upbeat, uh, not optimistic about the the notion that this offense can hit the ground running. Yeah. Week one, has anything about Shane's offense that you've seen in the last couple of weeks told you one showed giving you any more of a point of uh, you know where you can see it either happening or not, or maybe put the brakes yeah. on it or. or, or just, you know, well, I think I've been really happy with our run game in camp, and I know that's uh, you don't really get to see. I mean, maybe from your guys' perspective, just because it's not to the ground tackling, so you guys don't see the what we're kind of seeing on the film room. But 
I, I've been really happy with that. I think that's looked really well. And, and obviously Caleb's done some really cool stuff. And um, I think Shane, you know, when we were wa watching the game the other day, I just like how he flowed plays together and, um, you know, made a lot of sense to me and, and how he was calling the plays. And so that was really cool to see. And, um, you know, like I said at the beginning with Shane, I think he's a really great teacher. Guys have been, you know, really bought into his process. And, um, you know, I still see that happening. I do. I, we got, uh, we still got a lot of time here in camp. You know, someone, what is it, August? It's only August 3rd still. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's freaking crazy. <laughs> uh, so only August 3rd. So we got, we got a good month still before that first game. So we got a lot of time to, to get this thing right and a lot of practice reps to get through all this. And, um, but I, I, I like where it's going. I can really say that, yeah. We're feeling your pain on the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> Cole, you talked about, talk about there being hiccups and stuff in the recent practices. Yeah. Are you a guy that goes to the huddle trying to address those things, or are you kind of letting the quarterbacks take over? And do uh, yeah, you, you want to let Caleb kind of handle that and let him deal with that. Um, you know, you don't want to be the guy in the huddle, you know, always correcting him on what the play call maybe should be. Um, you got to let him kind of, in my opinion, kind of let him go through that and – figure that out, and, and he does a good job at, at making those corrections. So it's cool to see how that kind of bothers him uh, a little bit when he doesn't get it right, and he's able to correct it, you know, pretty quickly. So, yeah, he's just – he's going through that, and we got to let him go through that, go through those kind of growing pains of, of uh, you know, the operation of the huddle. And, you know, we're getting a lot of reps throughout camp, so I think his, he's been doing really well so far. But, um, you know, just the more he does it, the more reps he gets at it, uh, the better and better he'll be. Seeing a DJ get extended, were you – does it feel like, well, like, I know I'm going to have this guy, I know I'm going to have that guy, just more, maybe yeah. more solid than it's ever felt? Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, it's cool to, to see, just happy for DJ as a friend, first of all. Um, you know, it's really cool for him and his family, and awesome that he gets to, you know, for sure be around here for a little while. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we got a, I think we got a pretty good core, and it looks like it's solidified here for the, for the next few years at the very least, and um, definitely excited about where this can go. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.